Hey fam, if you are new to my channel, listen, make sure you subscribe. Come be a part of the family. So I said, ask yourself why you can't tell your spouse something. I said the why needs to be addressed and that um, the why is important. So let's get into it because I got so much feedback when I made that statement. And then also someone said, listen, talk more about that. So here we go. Do you realize you can be married for 50 plus years and someone in that marriage can still not be vulnerable? Yeah, I said it. I said it. Because many people believe if you've been together for a long time that everyone must be vulnerable or both spouses are vulnerable, but that's not always the, the case. And especially after I put the statement and so many people had things to say, I'm like, mm, there's a thing here. Um, so the other thing I want to address is, yes, vulnerability, but then the other big major piece in relationships and in marriage is that you are allowing the person to be themselves. Because if you allow them to be themselves, vulnerability will naturally come and communication will naturally come and you'll learn so much more about your spouse. But if they're afraid, that word is strong. I would use the strong word, afraid. And I didn't, it didn't mean like, oh, I'm scared. Um, but it's more like, I don't know how you're going to react to what I say. And the unknown can be very uncomfortable. And that's why it's so, so, so important that when your spouse comes to you with certain things that if you don't know what to say, you sit silent and just be present. Um, but if you do know what to say or you do want to say something, make sure it's not judgmental. Make sure it's you're hearing them. You're hearing from their heart and not just from what their mouth is saying. And make sure you are present in the moment. That means the TV's off. That means you're not on your phone. That means you are looking in their eyes and communicating in, a, in an effective way. So I said, ask yourself. So I just think like in relationships, in marriage, you have to ask yourself, if I don't tell my spouse something, why can't I tell them or why do I feel like I can't tell them? That will help you understand what's going on and what's happening. So you can get to the root of the problem um, instead of just like continuing your marriage that way or your relationship that way. It has been said though, because um, this is a conversation, an ongoing conversation, that some people say that I think they're going to throw it back in my face. I don't think they're going to be supportive. I don't think they're going to um, uplift me or encourage me. I don't think that they're going to say congratulations. Um, this is real in marriages. Like you think it's just a couple of like people going through things and you think you see a picture and they both smile and they look happy that everything's good. But there's always that one person in the marriage that feels like I don't have a voice. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter that. I'm going to keep things to myself because it will keep peace in the house. And let's address this word peace. Is it really peace if you are afraid to say what you need to say? Is it really peace if you are afraid of the reaction from your spouse? Is it really peace if everyone in that house can feel it? Is it really peace? So I'm so sick of this for peace sake. Do this for peace sake. And then it's always addressed to the woman. Oh, you know, do this for peace sake, just to have peace in your house. But is it really peace? So as you can see, I got a little emotional with that part because so many times you hear that for peace sake, you know, I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything for peace sake. I didn't everything for, for peace sake. And you only hear it being taught to the women. You never hear it being taught to the men that for peace sake, do this or for peace sake, do that. And I don't know what that's about. I think it's just a gender thing. I think it's like, oh, he's the man. So you can be uncomfortable while he's comfortable. Um, Let's really think about what I said. You can be uncomfortable while he's comfortable. That doesn't sound fair. It doesn't sound okay. It doesn't sound godly. And if we were talking about race, like black and white, 
if we were talking about race, we would be definitely saying like, it's not okay for us to feel uncomfortable and um, Caucasians to feel comfortable. And it's not okay that we kind of, um, we, we act a certain way so they can feel comfortable. We don't do certain things so they can feel comfortable. And we always say like, that's not peace in our community. That's not peace as a black woman or black man or a black community. But in marriages, we seem to accept it. It's a little confusing to me because it's not peace. I have to be honest with you, though. I believe that many people would not want to address the why. And the reason they wouldn't want to address the why is because then they would have to address so many other things that's happening in the marriage. And for whatever reason, people get comfortable with how their marriage is and they don't want to change anything. I don't believe that a marriage stays the same from beginning to end. I believe there should, should be some growth. I believe that there should be opportunities to uh, make you both grow individually and together and as a family. I also believe that um, that if, if you're allowing room for growth in all those areas, that the vulnerability will also come as long as you're present and you're still supporting. And being there for your spouse or um, in that relationship that you are present. So for many people, it must have resonated with them because people had so much to say. So this is a thing, y'all. This is a thing that people in marriage, probably very healthy marriages, are afraid to tell their spouse certain things. I honestly believe that in marriage, that there should be some vulnerability um, and the only way to do that is if your spouse has created an environment to do so. Your spouse has to be loving, caring, understanding, have empathy. Let me say the word empathy again. Have empathy. Um, they need to be someone who is willing and able to listen without thinking about responding or how they're going to respond, but really hearing from the heart of that person. Um, and I also believe that if vulnerability is not there, there's a lot you're not going to know about your spouse because you haven't made it easy to know the things, the hidden things, the secret things, the things that will make you get closer. You haven't made it where that can even happen. So on that note, if you are new to my channel, subscribe. I just wanted to come on and say a little bit more, but I also want you to know that if you are afraid to talk to your spouse or uh, in a relationship, or maybe it's a friend you're afraid of to talk to, like address that. Let's address that. Let's have adult conversations about what's really going on. All right, y'all. Peace, love, and blessings.